can we calculate products and quotients of power series? Well, yes, we can, but we don't want to. Try to avoid this whenever possible. In this video, you will learn how to compute products and quotients, and you will also see why you want to avoid this. So let's take a very easy product, and then you will already see that it becomes complicated. We take each power x times sine x around a equals zero. So we uh, know that there's zero of e to the power x, uh, and we uh, do it up to order x to the power 5. So 1 plus x, x squared over 2, x cubed over 3 factorial, x4 over 4 factorial. We know sine of x, um, x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the power 5 over 5 factorial plus a term of x to the power 7 in higher order. And now we want to compute the product of those two, of those, this one and that one, up till uh, x to the power 6. So, we have our e to the power x over here, and we have our sine of x over there. And now we are already neglecting here uh, order x to the power 5 times x, so we will be neglecting terms of order x to the power 6 and higher. Now we're going to do the multiplication. We have a uh, 1 times x minus x cubed over 6 plus x to the power 5 over 100, 120 plus 1 times order x to the power 7. Well, we already uh, neglected x to the power 6, so this is even smaller. Then we have the x times x and x squared minus x to the power 4 over 6 plus x to the power 6 over 120, but that's order x to the power 6. So it's neglected into this over here. Then we have an x squared over 2 times x, so let's use this term, x squared over 2 times minus x cubed over 6, so minus x to the power 5 over 12, and then if you uh, multiply here, uh, it becomes already order x to the power 6 absorbed over here. And then the other two uh, other terms, x cubed over 6, multiply again by the x, so you get the x to the power 4 over 6. And the other one gives you an x to the power 6, already to a high power. And x to the power 4 over 24, again times the x, x to the power 5 over 24. And if you would continue, you get terms order x to the power 6. Same with this one, order x to the power 5 times x also gives you terms of order x to the power 6. And now you also see the strength of those order symbols, because you are now really keeping track of what you're throwing away. And you really see that you don't forget anything, which is, as you see, very important in those big products, because you have an infinite number of terms over here, infinite numbers, number of terms over there, and in just those cross multiplications, you could easily forget some terms. Now, let's clean up some of the mess. Uh, uh, x to the power 1 over here. Uh, let's see what do we have for x squared. We have a 1 times x squared over there. So we've done those, this term and that term. x cubed terms, uh, minus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 2. So that's 1 over 3, that's this term. Uh, x to the power 4 terms, here and here cancelling out. x to the power 5 terms, uh, 1 over 120, minus 1 over 12, 1 over 24 equals minus 1 over 30. So there we are. Uh, there we have the product of uh, the two power series up till order x to the power 6. You see, it is doable. It is not so difficult, uh, but it's really annoying. Can it become even more annoying? Yes, it can, if you take a quotient instead of a product. So the tangent of x around a equals 0. Well, tangent of x equals sine x over cosine x. Uh, it has some power series. We know that it's an odd function, so we have only odd powers. So it behaves like this. Uh, c1 times x plus c2, 3 times x cubed plus c5 times x plus 5, and we neglect terms of x to the power 7 and higher. Uh, then we know that this equals sine x over cosine x. So this power series equal, uh, times cosine x has to be equal to sine x. Uh, now we know the power series of the sine, we know the power series of the cosine, so we plug them in, sine x over here, and the cosine x over there, and the unknown over here. And what uh, we are going to do now is to work out this product, 
and then we compare this product to the left hand side over here, term by term, in order to find C1, C3 and C5. So, there we go. Uh, we have a 1 times C1 times X over here, 1 times C3 times X cubed over here, 1 times C5 times X to the power 5 over here, 1 times or the X to the power 7 over there. Okay, 1 is done. Then minus x squared over 2 times uh, c1 times x, so that is this term over here, minus x squared over 2 times this term over here. And if you would continue, you get a something of order x to the power 7, which can be absorbed over here. x squared is done. x to the power 4 over 24 times c1 times x yields the this term over there. And if you would continue, you get power is x to the power 7, which are absorbed over here. And then if you continue, you get order x to the power 6 times c1 times x is also of order x to the power 7. So there we are, we haven't forgotten anything. And now we are going to compare. Uh, here we have a c1 times x and here an x. So c1 has to be equal to 1. Comparing x cubed terms, uh, we have a minus 1 over 6 here. And here a c3. And... Uh, uh um, minus one half c1 over here. So c3 minus one half uh, c1 equals minus one over six, c1 equals one, so c3 equals one over three. Then we compare x to the power five terms, one over 120 here, uh, c5 here, and here a minus c3 over two, and a plus c1 over 24. We know C1, we know C3, so we can compute uh, C5. C1 equals this 124 plus 1 over 8 equals 2 over 15. And there we are, the tangent of x equals C1 plus C3 times x cubed plus C5 times x to the power 5. We know C1, C3 and C5, so we know the first few terms of the tangent of x uh, up till or x to the power 7. And you see if you would continue like this, it becomes messier and messier and messier. So yes, you can compute products and cosines of power series and no, you don't want to do it if you can avoid it.